This is the Premium Pete Show. Internet, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting down uh, with a, a very interesting fella. Okay, they call him the brand father, but he's an entrepreneur. And 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 you know, I know that word is used so much these days. But honestly, from you know knowing Reed and sh- first of all, shouts to Reed Bergman, dear friend of mine. He was like. You know Rohan Oza? I was like, yeah, I know him. I don't know. I know of him. I don't know him. He's like, oh, you guys got to sit down together. And I was like, come on, man. That'd be beautiful. And and thanks to him and his team and your team for taking the time to sit down today. Internet's Rohan Oza, welcome to the Premium Pete Show. Thanks for having me, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know, first off, you know, we, we were talking before we started. We were talking about it's okay to fail, you know? And many people don't want to fail. You know, my daughter is 19 years old, I was telling you. And I think that generation is so afraid to fail, like, I didn't do it. It, it wasn't me, or, or they, they, they don't want to be blamed for anything. But they have a lot of, you know, uh, mindset that they want to succeed at stuff. Why is it okay to fail? Well, I think my success has come from my failure. And a lot of people use that line, "Oh, it, you know, it's okay to fail." And but I give real examples. So, you know, I started Mars M and M's. I was young. I was naive. You know, I was in manufacturing because I did engineering. Because you know, I'm Indian. Parents like, you know, engineering, medicine, I sucked at both. Uh, so I did engineering. I wasn't that good. Mars m and was a, you know, I was supposed to go into senior management. Didn't work out. So it's an up or out culture. So I was out. That then, a lot of these things send you in a different direction, right? That sent me to Michigan to do my MBA. Amazing experience. Michigan has got the best of both. Amazing college, but also amazing network, which becomes very important over time. And then I went to Coke. And then, you know, I thought I was kicking ass. I'm, the, you know, I'm doing all this stuff with hip hop. I'm, you know, the brand manager on Sprite. You know, I'm dealing with, you know, guys you've had on the show from, you know, LL to sure. Nas, AZ. You know, we did all sorts of stuff back in the day. And then, you know, I'm probably a little too cocky, to be honest. And then I get fired again. And the reason that it was okay to get fired is, one, it caused you to check yourself. So you're like, okay you know, what, what's not working for me? What am I doing wrong? But then it forces you to take risks and take a leap that you don't always take when you're comfortable. So if I'm sitting and in a big company and I'm making a good paycheck and I'm driving my, you know, I was, whatever, 26, I'm driving my BMW 3 Series convertible, <clears throat> which I thought was very cool at the time for me, my first car that I could afford, and I'm, you know, man about town in the ATL. And it's like, okay, th- this is great. <laughs> um, you hit a comfort zone, and suddenly you, you're, you're married, and you've got kids, and you're like, you can't afford to leave because the golden handcuffs are too strong. And part of, I got to thank the, you know, the person who fired me because when, when I had to leave Coke, I had to take a risk, and I went to an entrepreneurial company that no one had heard of. In fact, I spoke to my mentor at Coke. He said, where are you going? I said, vitamin water. So what do they do? He said, I said, they put vitamins in water. He goes, <laughs> good luck with that. I mean, he didn't say shit at the end, but he basically was like, good luck with that shit. And, uh, <laughs> and it worked out okay. But I think if I didn't get fired, if, I, if there hadn't been a failure, I wouldn't have taken the risk. Because to go to an entrepreneurial company, you're taking a you know, pay cut, you're, back, you know, you're believing in equity, how much equity, what does it sell for? It's a lot of risk. But I think failure can re- lead to you taking risks. You know, in vitamin water, people think about, um, I think a lot of people, especially in hip-hop, think about 50 Cent when they hear vitamin water. How did that even come about, you know? Well, it's interesting. So um, the founder of the company had an amazing vision for the brand, Guy called Darius, and the, the president of the company who was head of sales was like just a dynamo. A guy called Mike from Queens, like he just, he was the energy force. But the brand lacked the sizzle. It was like, Cool package, we're getting to the right places, but people didn't know about it. Like, kids weren't like, yo, vitamin water, what's that? It was, it was not, there was not a, a connection. And hip hop has always been big, but I, I personally loved hip hop because I did a lot with Sprite. I dealt with hip hop celebrities. I felt that there w- it was very real, it was very authentic, but I'd always seen it usually associated with alcohol, right? It was Pasta Cavassier, it was Hennessy, it was. Moe, it's you, you name it. It's some, sure, some sure. rapper done something. But I, I wanted a hip-hop artist. And the two biggest guys at the time were 50 and Jay. To be fair, <clears throat> my friend knew 50. He didn't know Jay. <laughs> now, now he knows him. But so I, my friend Seth said, you know, I, I know 50s guys. So he connected me with Fifth and a guy called Chris Lighty. Mm. Rest in peace. Rest and, in peace. And Chris was, Chris was very smart. 
man. I mean, he came from the streets, but he was a savvy businessman. He, he briefcase everything. Right. I mean, he he walked two worlds, right? And um, and he and I became very good personal friends, uh, as did Fifth and I. And uh, I told Fifty, I said, look, bro, I, I don't have the money to pay you because he was the he was the biggest artist at the time. In the club had just come out the year before. It was two thousand and whatever three or four. I said, I don't have the money to pay you, and he said, don't worry. I'll bet on myself. I just want skin in the game. And at the time, I thought, oh, great. This guy's going to take skin in the game. I have no cash to pay him. Uh, how much can he really make? Like, sure, let's do skin in the game. And a couple of my business partners didn't want to do it. They're like, no, this guy's been shot nine times. He's a rapper from Queens. Like, we've got a good <laughs> brand here. But to be fair, I give the founder of the company credit. He said, you know what? I don't think you're going to get this done. Because if you do, but if you do, I'll back you. And the top two guys of the company backed me. Um, I got the deal done. And kind of the rest is history. Fifth put it on his back. And he's like, and it's funny, when he actually met the original founder of Vita Mortar, uh, because they, they never they, they didn't meet for a year, because I was I was working with Fifth and we went to one, one of Fifty's uh, concerts. And Darius walks up to Fifty and says, Pleased to meet you. I'm I'm the actual owner of Vitamin Water. Because Fifth had told everyone that he owned Vitamin Water. Yeah, right? sure, he was like, sure, this is sure. my company. So yeah. You know, he, he has a line in a song where he says, uh, you put quarter water and you know and, and sold it for how how much did Fit is it public knowledge how much did he got for it's that? It's not. And you know, if you know Fifth, if you have a podcast, like, you know, he likes to keep his shit tight. Yeah. Or he doesn't. He's either very public or very yeah, private. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um and so we have an agreement. I don't tell people how much he actually made and he doesn't beat me up. So I think it's a fair it's a fair arrangement. It was a good, it was a good, good investment for everybody. No, he did very well. He bet on himself, and he made. I mean, he changed the game. Yeah. Because what what I did with Fifty, and to be fair, I wasn't that smart at the beginning that I was trying to change the game. I was just trying to get involved with a, a huge artist to help drive the awareness of the brand. That's, I mean, like no one knew Vitamin Water in a big way, and Fifth helped put it on the map. But he, when he did the equity deal. Every celebrity stopped and said, one second, why am I picking up cash paychecks when I can pick up equity paychecks that are a lot bigger? And that's when every celebrity started going, okay, I want skin in the game. I want skin in the game. You know what's so powerful when you mention equity? You know, most people, and even, even somebody like myself, I remember, you know, when I was younger, having a little bit of money, not wanting to invest because I didn't have the patience to wait you know, this day and age, you think about it. If you're making a little bit of money and you could get an equity deal and you have patience, it will pay off. But most people need the money now. Like if you consult for a company, right, and you're not making much money, you got a family at home, and they're like, oh, we'll give you, you know, three points or we'll give you, you know, 3% or whatever, or say 100000 you may need the money instead of the equity. You know? I, I've made the same mistake myself. And I, I helped change the equity game with Fifth. But there's been there's been times where I took the cash, and I probably should have taken the skin, and there's a, but there's a risk factor, right? Because not every company is a Vitamin Water or a Buy or an Uber or a, you know there's others that not because you don't control the game when you own half a point or you know a percent you're not controlling the game, so there's a risk factor where you hard cash is guaranteed. So that's why even today with certain artists that I deal with they want the hard cash. But a lot more have moved into, if they believe in the brand, the equity game. The key is you could consult for somebody to help them out, take the cash, always. Mm. But if you truly believe in the brand, the product, the service, then take the skin. The guy who did that mural for Facebook believed in it, took skin in the game, and worked out pretty okay for him, right? No, I believe so. You know, most people ask uh, certain questions about entrepreneurship. Most people, you know, look at you and they see, and this is what this is one thing I hate about social. They'll see you take a picture in a Ruber and be like, damn, I want to be Rohan Oza. Not knowing the late nights you put in, not knowing the fucking times where you could have been struggling or, or the deals you could have lost. But really, when you think about it, and this is the million dollar question, what is branding? Like if someone asks you, like, you know, for people listening at home who may not even know who Rohan Oza is, what, what is Brandon? Because they do call you the brand father, right? Yeah. It's so funny how that came about. So there was, there was a company called Buy that I was the number two investor in. The founder was a brilliant guy called Ben, created this company. I met him. Oh, to drink Buy. Yeah, drink yeah, Buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I met him through a, a guy called Senator Bill Bradley, you know, the, the sure. former, former Nick. And he said, yo, come check this brand out. It's, it's a beverage. And I'm like, oh, another beverage. But it's Bill Bradley. So you go, you go see it. Sure. 
And I met Ben. I'm like, this guy is smart. And then I tried the product. Like, this is lights out. This because everyone is looking for low sugar. Everyone's looking for you know non artificially sweetened. But everyone wants America's not going to sacrifice taste. It's going to taste good though. And Ben had it. It was like all three in one. So I got involved. We, you know, he, he led the way. We built. Uh, we built by. But there was a guy at the company who was like the DNA, and we called him the brand father. So I'm giving an interview at Hollywood Reporter. And they're like, you know, Ro, what do you do? This, that. I'm like, well, you know, this, that, and the other. And same question, what's branding? And well, you know, there's a guy called the brand father. Like, brand father? Bro, you're the brand father. I'm like, well, no, no, whatever. So it moves on. Next thing you know, Hollywood Reporter headline, Hollywood's brand father. So Ron suddenly that's, Ozzie. yeah, exactly. So it's funny how these titles come about. But branding is a emotional connection between a product and people. It's fundamentally that. And the product could be premium pee. It doesn't have to be a beverage or a snack. The product could be Uber or Lyft, right? But it's an emotional bond, right, between the brands. And sometimes you switch between brands, but a lot of the times when you build that emotional bond, especially in America because we're the kings of branding as a country, consumers then go repeatedly back to the product until the product fails them. You know, for people, again, you know, I mentioned this before you uh, went to that, but for people who may not know you, where did you grow up? You grew up here? I have a, remember that movie, uh, Highlander? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're old enough to know that, right? Yeah. They said, you know, where are you from? Because lots of different places. Um, That's pretty much me. I'm originally Indian. Okay. But my great-grandfather jumped on a ship like a hundred years ago just to say, yo, let's go somewhere. Said, fuck it, I'm out. He's out. And then he, he hit... He hit uh, Mozambique, and he got off the ship, and nobody spoke English because he spoke Eng- English and an Indian language. And so he was like, oh, shit. So he kept coming inland, and he hit, back then, southern Rhodesia, which is today Zimbabwe. And he's like, oh, they speak English. Great. We'll set up shop here. So I'm, I'm originally Indian, but I'm a third-generation African. My grandmother, my dad, and I were all born in Zambia and Zimbabwe. And then I moved to London studied in England, worked for Mars m M&M, so I became British. And then I came here, went to Michigan, and then Atlanta, where I kind of learned my real marketing. And now I live in L.A. and New York, and now I'm American. Look at that. Look at that. You just told the fucking whole story in three minutes. <laughs> but now when you grew up, you grew up with mom and dad in the house? Yeah. And what did mom do? So my mom was a homemaker. Okay. So guaranteed, we come home from school, mom was there. Like it's, yeah, there's, and there's a very powerful component, which I don't think people understand the importance of. Like, obviously she wanted to have her own purpose. She did, she did a bunch of charity stuff. She did, you know, she worked on her schedule, but her priority was us. And that made a big difference in our lives in terms of having that infrastructure at home. And what about Pops? What was Pops doing? So he had a hardware store. And uh, he, you know, pretty self-made. He, you know, took, first he had a clothing store. He had a lot of hustles. A clothing store. Then he had a bakery. And we, I mean, Indians are not bakers. Sure. I mean, we do a lot of things, but baking ain't one of them. Was he Italian making thing. cannolis over Yeah, here? exactly. I mean, uh, we had a bakery, and I'd still go to Sorrento's, the Italian <laughs> guy down the road, because it was so much better. So we got rid of the bakery. And then he got in the hardware business and uh, really built it over time to one of the biggest agricultural uh, companies in Zambia where he works with all the biggest farmers to help with products and, and equipment to help them with their farming. You know, I speak about this all the time. I'm big on parenting. How important was it for you to, <clears throat> excuse me, to have a mother and father, you know, there to, to raise you and grow you up? And, you know, because some people, look, I've sitting down with so many people uh, that didn't have a mother or didn't have a father and, and, and it truly affected them. You know, uh, of how they move. Now, didn't really, you know, uh, push them back later on in life, but it hurts. You know, it hurts sometimes when you don't have, and sometimes it helps when you have both of them. Did, do you feel it helped you having both of them? You know, I mean, for me, it, it, was a, it gave me a really strong foundation. It, they always gave me the confidence that I could leap. And I always knew I had that. I'm very close to my sister still, my niece and nephews. But, so when you have a close, tight family like that, yeah, yeah you'll have arguments, you'll do a little fighting, but but when you're very close, there is a support infrastructure that allows you to take that leap. And, but sometimes when you don't have the parents, you grew up with one parent, it's almost, it spurs you on to do more, right? So there's different ways to look at it. But definitely, it was a huge part. I mean, my parents are my heroes. They, you know, they, 
I think they raised us right and gave me the foundation to say, you know what, damn it, I'm going to give it a go. My dad even told me, don't come back and work for me. <laughs> no, no nepotism. No nepotism. You know, I worked for my pops, man, for like two years. That shit was tough, man, because he was, they're harder on you than, you know, it's, it, it's a tough, it's tough to work for your parents, man. You know, I see a lot of family. Let me tell you something, man. And, and this, this is great to even hear from you. Even going into like, a, you know, Chinese takeout, right? You know, uh, actually, I went to go get poke in Philadelphia. My lady said, she said, ah, you know, let's have some poke. I said, okay. So I have this spot that I go to in Philly on South Street. I love it. And I go in there, and they, they just opened up like a half hour ago. And the, the, the owner, the lady was there. And out comes her son with, I guess he was bringing like the, a, 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 the bowls. a bowl of like uh, cucumbers. They must have been chopped up. Seven years old at least. I mean, carrying this big thing and giving it to her. The daughter's at the, at the register ringing me up. And I'm like, uh, and I... I I made the mistake of saying, calling the, the mother, I was saying, I just want to make sure we put this on the side. And, and she just literally gave it to her daughter. And I was like, oh, you want it on the side? And I was like, how old are you? <laughs> She's like, eight. So, you know, and then she was, it was just amazing to me. And that's, that's a work ethic. Yeah. So that's a different scenario. And I think that, that I think that, you know, I don't want to sound old and stuff, but sometimes with maybe the millennials, Gen Z, I even see it with, you know, younger kids today, the work ethic is not what it, I think, I think honestly, our work ethic wasn't as good as maybe our parents. True. Like, my and parents definitely true. fought. Because for them, it was survival, right? For them, it was like, you know, what, what are we going to do? For, for us, it's like, okay, I've got that foundation. Parents put me a foundation. How do I leap for success now? And sometimes I feel for the next generation, it's like, when's my new iPad coming? And so it's like a different ethos. And I, I was working a lot, like, internships every summer, whether, you know, I worked in factories in Zambia and, you know, you, you have to do that because it gives you a degree of discipline because today everyone wants to be Zuckerberg. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start my app. And then next thing you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be Uber. True. And like, there's about 10,000 failures that happen before, before yeah, the, and yeah. every, no one sees those because no one reports the 10,000 failures. Has do you, you and your father, you know, from, from an Indian perspective, you know, I, I mean, do, do Indian fathers, are, are you very close with your father? Like, did he hug you? Did he like, you yeah, know, yeah. tell you he loved you, right? You know, because I, I, I'll give you an example. My father, great man. I love him. Uh, worked three jobs when he was young, you know, hustling to, you know, for us. I never really seen him a lot. And, and it sucks because that's what you get for trying to right. put food on the, for the family. But I will say this. His father from Italy, man, these guys didn't really hug him. So then they don't hug you. That's why I look at now, like I go to swim school with my son and I always say this and I see a bunch of fathers in there kissing their kids and hugging. It, it, it's it's we're in a new generation. Can, no question. Yeah. I see with my with my brother in law, like he's great with the kids. Like he's you know he hugs them. I love you all the time. Like some of the kids are pulling away while the dad's trying yeah, to hug him. Yeah. Like, leave my, me alone. My, yeah, yeah. My niece like yeah, leave me alone. But you know it's like I think that it is different. Uh, my dad, I mean my granddad definitely was not like he was old school Indian. Like he was always there, but not the hugging type. My dad definitely more, and obviously. I'm, I'm a lot more. So I think just, you know, we're, we're a more touchy-feely generation now than it used to be. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, in a good way, you know. I mean, it's important for that. You know, I really, I really, I really uh, am big on that because, uh, you know, sometimes you look at it from the kid's perspective too. It's like, you know, like there's, there's, there's nothing better than having uh, the love of your parents, man. You know, I agree. You know, it's important. You know, um, a lot of people w will look to you. You're on Shark Tank, right? You know, what, what season 10 is this? Uh? Yeah, season 10. Oh, decade, Matt, of, decade of dreams, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Matt Higgins was on there too, yes, this guy. My boy. Dude, I, 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 Higgins, I need to get on his program. That guy, like, Reed told him, like, you're getting on Shark Tank, buddy, but camera adds 10 pounds. Yeah. So Higgins went and lost, like, 60. Yeah, he's doing chiropractic. I'm therapy like, bro, now. where's the rest of you? I, I don't know. He's moving. You know, a lot of people look to you as somebody who's right, you know? And, uh, you know, you're in shock tank. They're like, all right, this guy, this. How many, how many times would you say you've been wrong? So I, I tell my align to friends is that, uh, or even business partners, I'm like, guys, I think I'm right 80% of the time. 75 to 80% of the time, I'm right. Here's a problem. I don't know the 20% that I'm wrong. So I think I'm right the whole time. The key is for us to figure out why you need smart people around you. The key is to figure out what's that 20%. Like my, my, my hit rate on companies and investments is probably 80%. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, in baseball, you're batting 800. Sure, the sure. Hall of Fame, Come on. Right? But, yeah, no, I've had my, you know, I've timed a couple of things wrong. 
even companies that I've built that are cool brands, it doesn't matter if you build a cool brand, you've got to time the exits right. You know, and not and beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So when you time the exit, there better be someone there ready for it. So, you know, I've you know, I've I've probably batting eight hundred, but you know, missed a couple of ones that I should have won. And then I was nicely stupid on a couple of deals because I typed telephone numbers in wrong. So one of the stories I tell a good buddy of mine was passing the hat around for a ride sharing app about five years ago. And I said, Sure, I'll put a few hundred grand in, why not? It seems like a good idea ride-sharing app. I didn't quite understand it, but I kind of did. So I got his number and I said, I'll put some money in. And uh, then I texted him. He didn't respond. I texted him again. And then this way I got to watch my ego because my, my ego got the better of me. And I'm like, oh, screw that guy. Like I texted him twice already, like nice text, didn't respond to me. I mean, how much can I make off that deal really? You know, I mean, it might go bust. Anyone want to guess what the ride-sharing app was? Uber? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Ah, it's only a 70 million miss. I, could, I want to shoot myself all the time. I think about it. <laughs> but it's just, you know what? That's the mistake you learn, which is, yo, check your ego. Like, there's other friends we had in common. And you know what I'd done wrong? I, I transposed numbers. So with numbers, I'm sometimes dyslexic. I transposed numbers. And I wrote a cell phone number down. I meet him a year later. I'm like, yo, what happened? He goes, I never got any texts. I said, what's your number? I look it up. I had the last two numbers switched. Mm. And so at that point, he's like, you know what? Get your hustle back on. If you really want something and you can't get the guy, we had mutual friends in common. Go to the mutual friends. And I said, is this the right number? Yeah. Find his email. Mm-hmm. Connect with him. He was happy to do it for me. But it was my ego that got in the way that, oh, this guy's not getting back to me. Oh, Fuck. We could have so much lobster and sushi. We could be in that Nobu every day. Yeah, we could. you and I could be rolling now. That's it. You know? What the fuck? Well, but uh, listen, for, for everything you miss, you know, there's a lot of things you hit. You know, if if you I, I know this may sound weird, but if you if you lost it all today, do you think you could get it back tomorrow? Not everything now, but meaning like you know, is did you come to a point where you know it would break you down, or you still believe that you know that that, that hustle is in you fully? No, I think the hustle is in me fully. Look, it would be painful, right? You mean because you get used to a certain lifestyle, you get you know, and look, there's some people who maybe are more zen than I am, or who have done well, but really minimize their life. And I give a lot of respect to them for that. If they're leading that minimalist life, I haven't matured to that point yet. So I'm still kind of living large. So if I have to stop living large, it's going to hurt. But I think it makes you hungrier, to be honest. Mm. Like the fact that I miss some of these deals makes me hungrier to fight to go get stuff, right? Because if you've got a lot built up, then you're, you know, you're more chill, which is why some of these guys impress me. You know, like Elon Musk has made a ton of money. He wants to change the world, you know? I mean, Bezos doesn't need any more money. Even with half the money, he's still, he's still good, but he wants to change the world. And so at some point, it doesn't become about a cash. It becomes about how do you change, how do you change the environment around you to make it better? Mm. You mentioned half the money. Uh, you didn't get married yet, right? I did not get married. And your parents didn't set this up for you and say, what are you doing? You got to get married. I think my mom has hit fat up point. Yeah, like, okay. It went from like, I mean, like, you know. Was this going to happen? Yeah, she's, I mean, she's like, first it was, you'd like to marry an Indian you know, same background. And then she's like, just get married. And then she's like, are you gay? Like, you know, like the whole <laughs> whole gamut of questions have come through. And she's like, just fuck, get it done, guy. You think uh, immigrants work harder than Americans that are born here? I think there is an immigrant mentality because of where you come from to to drive harder. Yeah, I, you see it. You see it with generations. Sure. This is this is speaking in generalist terms, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't. There's certainly people work bust their ass and could be tenth generation in America, you know. But sure. uh, but in general, when you're coming in, because you're you're striving, you've you, you've already left another country, you've got not limited money, you've made the effort to come over here, and you've got to succeed. There's no safety net. You're not going back to Zambia. You're not going back to Nigeria or Bangladesh or whatever it is. So you you're fighting to, to win here, and I think that you probably do end up working harder. Yeah. Mm. And the the key with America is how do we keep that mentality going even if you've been here a couple of generations how sure. do you foster that drive and that that hard work ethic and that got to have multiple hustles to succeed ethos sure you said you were used to a certain lifestyle right it was did you ever buy something dumb you know because no one when you grew up you probably didn't have everything you have now you ever buy some dumb shit? I'll give you an example. We had Scott Storch on. I mean, he, he blew. He, he, he was the, you know, 
the are you familiar with Scott Storch? You know, no, I don't. Know. He, producer, he, you know, he he was worth like a hundred million at one point in time, and he blew it all at bad cocaine problems with Paris Hilton buying yachts. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, got it, got yeah. it. Yes, yeah. I mean, he made everything. He made uh, Christine Aguilera songs. He made you know. Now I know him. Yes, actually, I've Make met him. It rain. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, now I get it. Yes. Anyway, he he said that he had one time he bought a, a four little perfume bottles. Um, um, you know, dipped in diamonds. I think he spent like eight hundred thousand on them. They're like mini. He said he bought it because he's. I think he said he had like a sixty foot yacht. He bought a ninety one just because he didn't have a, you know, big enough. I think so. I'm a Gujarati. Mm. So Gujaratis, for you guys you don't know Indian, sure. are like the cheap Indians. Mm. <laughs> frugal, uh, frugal. Yeah, we're definitely frugal. Um, and now every now and then, you know, they do splash, splash out and do crazy things. I don't know if you saw the wedding that just happened which was actually a Gujarati guy. His daughter just got married. It's that movie Crazy Rich Asians. Okay. This was the real-life version. It was just Crazy Rich Indians. But he's also worth, I don't know, $60 billion. So, you know, for him, the amount of money he's spending is like you and me going down to have dinner at Nobu, right? We're okay to do that. Sure. He's okay to drop $50 million on a wedding. But um, so the Gujarati in me holds me back from making majorly stupid decisions. I like, like, but... Like Indians, like Jews, like we like to buy real estate. So probably the, the, the dumb moves that I've made is buying homes. Like every time I like something, like people are like, why don't you just rent the thing? I mean, rent it, Airbnb it. Why do you keep buying it? But it's like the, like my granddad always said, you know, when you like something, real estate, you buy it. It's an investment. So sure. they've been good investments, but I'm a li- probably a little too flagrant in buying, buying homes. How many, how many homes yeah, do you I, I can't. I do not want to discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, look, I will say – you, <laughs> I mean, I don't ski that much. I buying property, buy, but buy, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you, I, listen, you got to give me the keys for that. I got to go down there and take some hot chocolate. Yeah. Um, you know, buying real estate, I feel like you're right. It's funny how you say your grandfather. Or, I feel like that has standed the test of time. You yeah. know, where people are like, look, this works, right? You know, or 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 you even think about like, you know, our like, I never forget. We lived with my grandmother till I was 13. I grew up in Coney Island in Brooklyn. Then we moved to Bensonhurst. My reason why we moved is my father's, my, my aunt, uh, my father's, I think, aunt or whatever. I forgot who, who it was, but um, she had passed away and left him the, and left him the house. She, but she had uh. sold him the house for like $70,000. You know, it was probably worth three hundred. dollars You know right. what I mean? So we had, were able to get in. And then when he left, he left before he moved to Jersey. He couldn't believe it. It's like six. 50 or something like that. But what I'm saying, now it's like, I told him now, I checked for him. Over a million. It's like, it's, yeah. Yeah. And if, if you buy in the right place, by the New York marketplace, like LA, so you're good. So, I mean, am I flagrant in probably buying properties? Yeah, but they've, you know, touch wood, they've all appreciated. So, but it's probably a little too, but I don't do the, the crazy stuff that people do because my Gujarati roots kick in. I'm not buying a boat because that's, okay. that's the worst of No Bentley, no Bentley. No, no Bentley. Okay. Like no, I was Maybach? Gonna, I was going to buy a, a sports car the other day, and then this is how my Indian kicks in. So I was going to buy an Aston, if you want to know, and yeah. I was like, okay. Because growing up in England, like my rich friends had Astons. And, you know, these things like come into sure, your sure, head. Sure, sure, like, I know what you oh, mean. When I make money one day, I'm going to get an Aston. So I'm like, I'm going to get an Aston. Then I just – apparently I had a few speeding tickets. I mean, I didn't know this. So I then look up how much the insurance is going to cost me. I'm like – Oh, hell no. I'm not buying the Aston. <laughs> the guy's like, you can afford the Aston, but you argue about the insurance? I'm like, yeah, that's how my brain works. So now I'm not, I didn't get the car. Yeah, that's classic, man. You know what? Let's take a quick break. We're sitting here with the one and only Rohan Oza, the brand father. I mean, you know, it's stuck with him, the name. But the guy is, uh, like I said from the beginning, a very interesting fella. We're going down the, the levels of entrepreneurship, his journey. We're going to get back to what he's got going on now, a uh, big shark tanker. Uh, and again... Sitting here with Rohan Oza. Be right back. Don't go nowhere. Cheer. Yeah, yeah. What up, what up, what up? Internets, what up? Internets, what up? Internets, what up? You are now locked in. You tuned in. It's going down. I'm with my brother, my homie, my family, my guy, my Paisan, Premium Pete. It's going down. Don't go nowhere. Stay here. Real talk, real artists, real guests, real conversation, real wine. Real side smoking in the um, side room that you can smoke in. Real cameramen, real questions, real everything. Don't fucking go nowhere. Internets, we love you. Premium Peace Show. Ghosts. Internets, and we're back. Sitting here with Rohan Oza. Listen, you've been through a lot in your life so far. It's still, the journey's still just beginning. But when did you really consider yourself successful? Like, when did you say, like, fuck, like, I think I'm doing this? 
I think the the first point came when, like, the check hit the bank after we sold Vitamin Water. Because honestly, up until then, <clears throat> I was actually on Dr. Oz yesterday and talking about how to save money. Shouts to Dr. Oz. Was that? Shouts yeah, to Dr. Yeah, Oz. Yeah, I, I, he's great. And one of the things that I just didn't think of when I was younger is just pretend like you only make 80% of your salary. Because that way, if you only make 80 or 70% of your salary and you can afford – and you then tight budget to live within that, that 30% auto debit goes into a savings account. And that way you kind of just build up saving. I wasn't thinking that way. You don't when you're 21, 22, 23. Sure. So I was blowing everything that I had. <clears throat> then I went and borrowed money from my dad to buy vitamin water shares. So at which point, not only was I broke, I was in debt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was living medium but not large. And I was still like, what's, what's coming next? What's the next paycheck? What's the next gig? And then we sold Vitamin Water. And we sold it for a decent amount of money. And that was the moment that it changed my life. That's when I felt I got financial independence. I paid my parents off. I didn't have to live with my cousin in, uh, you know, in a small, small, small two-bedroom sure. in Murray Hill or Curry Hill. was very close. Um, and so that's when I realized, okay, and, and I want to do this again. Like, let's go sure, build something. Sure, sure. You got uh, addicted to it. Yeah, because, I mean, to me, it was, it was the beginning of, I think, a movement that was happening where everyone in America wants to feel better about themselves. I don't care if you're tall, short, white, black, male, female, straight, gay. You live in Manhattan. You live in Staten Island. You live in Des Moines, Iowa. You want to feel better about yourself. And that's the beauty of America is it, it does allow you to think that way. And I think that the way you do that is what you put in your body. It's what you eat and drink. What you put on your body with all the sort of personal care stuff, right? Beauty, personal care, and how you treat your body. Gym, fitness, spa, massage, etc. So I focused on the first three, food, beverage, and beauty. And to me, the brands of yesterday cannot be the brands of tomorrow. It just, you know, sodas are just liquid sugar. I mean, they, they can't be good for you long term, right? There's no real benefit. Like, cookies are great, but let's the amount of crap in those cookies, maybe you cut down on that, right? And people are doing that. They're looking for, they want to have their cake and eat. They want stuff that's healthier, but stuff that still tastes good. So like and Beyond Meat, did you... Did Beyond you, Meat, yeah. Did you see that coming? Yes, I saw that, and I did not get in early enough on the investment round. Those guys are great, props to them. And sometimes you miss some, you can't get all of them. But same thing, like, people want the future and the brands of yesterday. If a Velveeta cheese, if cheese lasts for like three years, it can't be cheese. Like... She should last like three <laughs> days, not three years. You know, it's funny. Even like when I was telling you off air about the pickles, these are the, the, the kid I was telling you grill those pickles. Those are <clears throat> in the refrigerator. Yeah. So they only have like a shelf life of like 60 days. There's some pickles on the fucking shelf for three years. Yeah. I mean, if they can't be good for you, what is in that pickle that lets it last for three years? Yeah. And so, the, the, and by the way, the, your pickle guy, the reason that's in vogue is fermented foods. Mm. You go back generations, ghee is back. Mm. Indians had ghee for thousands of years. Then we started using canola oil on this and that. And suddenly we're like, these guys knew, the oldies knew that ghee was better for you for X, Y, Z. Fermented foods, whether it's pickles or sauerkraut or kimchi, all the cultures, kombucha, did fermented foods because that helps your gut. So, so we're learning so much more now. And so for me, the journey is just beginning because to, the landscape has to change. Mm. You know, pop chips. <coughs> How did this happen? How did you get involved uh, with pop chips? So a friend of mine called me and said, have you heard of this company? I'm like, ah, no, I haven't. It was tiny. Then I saw the packaging. I'm like, oh, damn, this packaging is legit. And I flew to meet the founder, a guy called uh, Keith Belling. He's actually launching a new company now called Right Rice. What's that about? So everyone loves rice. I, I love rice. Right? Problem with rice is... Full of carbs, right? So he's creating good carb rice, cauliflower rice. And all you do is you take that. He's got pre-mixed packets in there that you just cook it up in five minutes. And it's, it's about eating right. So it's right rice. So he created Pop Chips. I met with him, loved the guy. We got along great. I said, I want to be part of this journey. And it was crazy because it's almost like it became a, it, it became a cultural phenomenon in like three years. Like he hired an amazing team. I brought a lot of the vitamin water guys over. And the buzz in the brand, you remember, was phenomenal. Sure. It was like the hottest snack. Sure. And I think what, what I learned from that is, one, I, you know how to build brands. But two, it's tough for independent companies to get 
the big distribution, some of the big guys. And you've got to partner earlier with the big guys, the Frito Lays of the world, etc. You got to get in there earlier to kind of help take brands to the next level because they have the distribution that independent companies don't. But they can't build the cool brands of tomorrow. So the phenomenon became great. Like we did, we did the stuff with Ashton Kutcher back in the day and, you know, did stuff with Katy Perry. But even just the grassroots became like, it's just a potato chip. But the buzz around it was, was insane. How hard was it dealing with, uh, you know, certain celebrities for, you know, like sponsorship like that? Is it tough to get them to, you know, or is it just about the money or is it just believing in the brand or, you know? I would say 80 to 90% of the time, I've luckily partnered with the right celebrities and they were great to work with. And it's mm-hmm. because I always sit down with them and their manager. So to get a, to have a real heart-to-heart, like, is this what you want to do? Because they all make good money. They don't have to do this. Like, it's because they want to do it and they think they can make something out of it, but they don't have to. And so for me is do they believe in the brand? That's the number one thing. Because if Justin Dillon didn't believe in buy, Tim Blake – it, was, it wasn't worth doing. So Just, he was a big investor. Just, Justin is arguably the biggest male artist on the planet, right? And he's triple threat, singer, dancer, actor, and just a great guy all around. But he, he didn't have to do it. But he, he explained the brand vision to me before I explained it to him. It's kind of annoying. I'm like, bro, this is my lane. Why, why are you taking, yeah, why are you taking you my doing lane? Yeah, I mean, I'm not singing in your house. Uh, but <laughs> no, it's... But he got it. And as soon as he did that, Ben and I looked at Ben and Ben looked at me and said, this is the guy. Yeah. And so he became an equity investor. He made, he made great money. And, but he had the vision. Sure. So if you partner the right – if you just, if it's a straight cash deal and you're doing it through an agent and you haven't sat with the talent, it's where things go wrong. Mm-hmm. What was Jennifer Aniston like? Jennifer's great, actually. Very smart. People, you know, the tough thing for Jennifer is literally everything she does is completely in the public eye. Mm-hmm. Right? Stemming, obviously, from – the divorce and so on yeah. and so forth. But to work with, she was great. She's, she's tough because she wants things a certain way, right? Certain photographers, certain look, certain feel. But she knows her brand. And she made the campaigns better because when we did it, to, it was together. She would like agree to stuff, stuff, just veto other stuff. But the uh, Smart Water campaigns with Jennifer were iconic. It was like it was a beauty campaign for a, for a water and it made Smart the number one water in the country. And that was, a lot, that was pretty much her doing. You know, there's uh, Styles Pete, a rapper from the Locks Group, you know, friend of mine, great guy. Uh, he has a couple of juice bars called Juices for Life. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, has this, he says this thing on Twitter that uh, water is the new soda. And I like that he is. Uh, it is. I like that he's pushing that narrative because that's sometimes all you need to fucking hear. Water is the new soda. Yeah. No question. And but I, but I also think sodas are going to evolve. Like there's a brand I got involved in yeah. uh, called Mother. I found it on Shark Tank actually. Really, it's amazing. Everyone wants apple cider vinegar, mm. but it tastes nasty. That shit is nasty. But they've managed to put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in a in a soda that's only five grams of sugar in a full bottle, twenty calories, and the thing tastes amazing. Mm. And I think that's where sodas are going to evolve to. It's like people still want bubbles. They still want favors. Sure, sure. So while water's going to keep growing, sodas are going to evolve into better for you sodas. Mm. Like sodas used to be feel good. Remember you drink a, a Pepsi or a Mountain Dew yeah, or a Sprite, yeah. you feel good about it. Yeah. Now people feel bad about it. You're sure, like, oh, sure, I sure. probably should have drunk. Sodas need to come back to people feel good about them. Like I drank this. Oh, what? That tastes amazing. And I got apple cider vinegar in my belly. Okay, let's go. Mm. What about coffee? Big money in coffee, you think? Coffee's big money. It's the number one drug the world wakes up to, right? Mm. I mean, caffeine is, that's what gets... You gets, ever get involved in any? Uh, yeah, we're, I'm, a, I'm a big investor in Bulletproof. Okay, nice. So the Bulletproof coffee is great. Mm. Uh, it's also a meal because you've got grass-fed butter. You've got brain octane oil. So your, your brain actually will it feeds on fats. There's a whole movement of good fats. I'm no expert, buddy. I just follow the smart people. Sure, but sure. the... The good fats are where your brain feeds off. So grass-fed butter or ghee, brain octane oil, that helps you fire in the morning, not just – and then you combine that with the caffeine, and that's why you're very alert. You have a bulletproof in the morning. It also keeps you full to lunchtime. Mm. Let me ask you, uh, switching gears for a second as we wind this episode down, how hard is it to, to date when you're wealthy? <laughs> it's um, a fucking real question. It's complex. Um, just because you, there's no way you, you can hide anything these days, right? So it's not like you can, I can post up in a, in a, in a 
two bedroom in Queens or, you know, Studio City or wherever it is and, and just like see if the girl really likes you for you. Like, you know, let's go for to Olive Garden for dinner or whatever. You can't. The problem is that within 30 seconds, they Google you, your Insta profile, you name it. They know everything about you. <clears throat> and so then your question is, are they with you for you or with you for what you have? And I think it definitely makes it complex and your antenna has to go up a lot higher. You also have to be cautious who you date as well because then, you know, this entire environment that we're in, who knows who comes out and says, says stuff when, you know, just, just for the money. So it, it, you, I think that you're getting ref, ref, referrals from friends is to me usually the best way because your friends are in a circle, right? You know them already. And then if they're referring people, if they know them. And sure, people may like your lifestyle and so on and so forth. And it's okay, by the way. It's, I have friends who have good lifestyles, and it's not like I'm judging them for it. I'm, and I enjoy it if they have it. I'm, we're doing it as sure, friends. Sure. But, so you got to just accept the fact that you have a certain lifestyle, and they're going to enjoy it. That's great. But are they a good person, right? Are they there for you in, through thick and thin? And usually if you get it from friends, it's kind of what I call pre-screened. Mm. So that's usually the way it works. When you think about it, you sit, you know, maybe, you know, you sit down and you get a chance to relax, and you say to yourself, Ooh, what do you want the Rohan Oza legacy to be? You know, what, what do you want people to remember you by? It's interesting. Um, I'm, still, I'm still working through that. I get it. Uh, but my, the, the reason I created the fund, we have a fund called Carvu. It means Ceiling Invisibility Unlimited. And the reason that I co-created Carvu um, was I want to change the landscape in America for food, beverage, and beauty. Because I think that what people are putting in their system and on their system is really bad for you. And I think the way people start feeling better about themselves is not through Xanax and drugs. and sure. It's through changing the, your behavior of what you put in and on your body. So the reason I'm doing this is, sure, we want to make money for our partners and be successful. But if you can change the landscape, and in 20 years' time, you go to a grocery store or a virtual grocery store, or a alter reality, uh, you know, alternative reality grocery store, you're, you're buying stuff that makes you feel better about yourself. Mm. And I think today, we're not there. And I think that, that the next 20, 30 years is where that landscape changes, mm. big time. Yeah. You know, there's somebody listening right now that, uh, you know, either A, wants to start a company, or has a company, or has an idea or even is just working a nine to five and feels fucking stuck, but they've been hustling on their side project. What would be some advice that you would give them? Two things. One, trust your gut. I was actually on Dr. Oz, as I mentioned yesterday. There were a couple of pictures. There was a lady who uh, uh, created a baby food, mm -hmm. and it's, it's basically fresh baby food, refrigerated. And her thing was everything, when I had a kid, everywhere I went, the baby food that, that I was buying was so processed that I felt wasn't good for my kids. And I couldn't back it because I already invested in one called Once Upon a Farm. And Jennifer Garner was a co-creator of that. But if that's, but her gut was telling her that. Follow your gut because it's a great idea. She's on the right tip. Because to me, entrepreneurs don't report the news. They make the news. Mm. So it's difficult for you to follow. There was no vitamin water before vitamin water, right? There was no bulletproof before bulletproof. So usually you kind of have to pave your way. So my first thing is trust your gut. If your gut's telling you, and then second is, Make the leap. It's never going to be perfect. People have changed packaging, labels, formulations over time. But don't delay it for three years procrastinating. If you're there, take the leap. Get some money from friends and family. And if it succeeds, swing for the fences. And if it doesn't, at least you tried. Mm. So you're sitting on a bunch of boards. Right now, um, you, uh, what is your main position right now? You, you have the company you co-created. Yeah, Kavu is the fund. So we're okay. probably involved in... 16, 17 brands. The ones that I'm leading are one bar. It's a protein bar, 20 grams of protein, one gram sure. of sugar. Uh, Health Aid, the kombucha, uh, vital proteins, collagen protein, bulletproof. Um, <clears throat> chef's Cut, the beef jerky. It's like, you know, sure. everyone, everyone, wants, everyone wants more meat snacks. They don't want the sugar and they don't want the, the bloating. So, you know, those are some of the, the bigger ones that I'm on. And, um, and we have a bunch more in the portfolio. Uh, one of the ones we just did was an amazing brand. If you try to call Chacha Matcha, mm, yeah, yeah, I, like I, line I, out yeah. the door. I, yeah. I, I think tea is a new coffee. Yeah. Like 
Chacha is going to be like the new millennial Starbucks. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And the founders of I like cool I, I, I like I like I'm, I'm a s I still I'm a green tea. I'm really not a coffee guy. I like green tea. You, so you try chacha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried it before. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the it's the best tasting stuff in the world. It's got it's got a line like uh, for Yeezys or sneakers. It's yes, a, yeah. no, I'm a mess with that. And exactly, you don't like it. I know, but it's like even when it's in winter, I'm like people are waiting in line in winter. Yeah, cold, cold, colder than a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, as as we wind this down, you um, what, what happened to Vito Coco? Didn't you? Uh... Yeah, so I was involved in Vito Coco. I sold out to the. Uh, uh, Another private equity group came in, so I sold out. Still great friends with the founder, a guy called Mike Kerbin. He's actually building kind of an empire. He's got Vita Coco, but now he's bringing other brands in to almost create an entire beverage um, like unit beyond just Vita. Mm, mm. So he's a smart guy. So there was a bunch. I feel like there was a bunch of brands out that stuck out to me. That the the, the colors of that. Uh, product you know in the way you know it came out because i think coconut water was like there's a lot of brands trying to put that out at that time uh, he, he, he he defined the landscape yeah i yeah. mean basically it started with him and his business partner going to try to find some women in brazil yeah and uh, his business partner fell in love with a girl in brazil so he went down to hang out with his boy and next thing you know created a billion dollar empire you know, <laughs> do, do you know i know i heard you throw a lot of parties do you know how to dance man so uh, i would say after helping building brands right up there my next skill is is dancing you know, Indian culture, dancing is huge. Dancing I mean, with I, the stars. Bobby, Rohan Oza. Yeah, that's Coming that's soon, step. 2019. I mean, Bollywood music. Like, she wants to, I, mean, I do Latin, Bollywood, hip-hop. Once it gets going, I'm on. So the big part of my parties is it's got to be a dance-off. If there's no dancing, it's a bust. Mm. You're up early in the morning? I need to get up earlier mm. because I go back and forth East Coast, West Coast a lot. I'm up earlier when I'm on the West Coast. I'm up a little later on the East Coast. Okay. But I think... I've been told by good friends that the earlier you get up, the more, the more, the more your hustle becomes. So that's my, one of my 19 goals is to, is to get cracking earlier. Last thing, you, uh, you, you, you look, I mean, I, I don't know if you reveal your age. I mean, people let's, fucking... Let's not give well. it out too much. But, okay. yeah, I, <laughs> but you look, you know, how do you maintain, you know, look, you look very young, you know. Um, people say that about me, but it's not about fucking me. <laughs> I'm asking you, how do you stay young, I, I looking think, young? I think a few things. One, um, I practice what I preach. So what goes into my sure, body sure. is I'm very conscious about now. Plus, I've got the Indian genetics. So I got to work on blood sugar and cholesterol yeah, yeah. and shit that I'm not even fat, but I'm like, I have these issues in my system. So I'm very conscious what goes in it. Two, I do really sleep. Like, I mean, I think sleep is, is, is critical. And if you either, if you got to get up early, you got to go to sleep early or on the weekends, definitely get it in there. And then look, I, I think that um, part of it is stress, the big part. Like I, I try and just when things get stressful, like you hang with friends, you decompress, you go do stuff that you enjoy because when stress builds up in your body, it will age you like a mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Rohan Oza straight up on Instagram and Twitter? At Rohan Oza straight up. And, uh, yeah. Any website uh, for that uh, fund that you have? or any uh, Yeah, Kavu Ventures. Okay. Listen, Internet, uh, Rohan, listen, I appreciate you taking the time. I know Thanks you're, for having you're me. moving around. We'll have you back when you've got some more things going on. Good luck to all the journeys. And I do want to say this. One thing I really do like is you come from the culture where you could have did a lot of things. You could have been just a doctor. They, you know, they, they, they could have had it all set out for you. Yeah. But you really uh, are, are not only inspiring others, but also breaking you know breaking the chains man and 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 open up doors for people to see that you know hey live your life man and 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 that's powerful man so i appreciate I wish you all well, the thanks best. for having me man internet's rohan oza Cheer.